Welcome to The Economy Magazine at I-24 News, where we provide a daily view on global markets and the world economy. I'm Natalie Ehrlich. Well, today we'll take an in-depth look at the burgeoning medical marijuana economy. According to the 2005 United Nations World Drug Report, the total value of the world's marijuana market is nearly $142 billion. Meanwhile, some 164 million people use marijuana worldwide. Well, coming up, we'll explore the drive for legalization in France and pharmacies which supply cannabis in Israel. Onto the program. Well, medical cannabis is illegal in France, even though some members of the medical community there believe its consumption is less harmful than some prescribed medicines. This next report examines what's behind that reluctance. Jean-Jacques has been HIV positive for 30 years. The side effects of his medication are weight loss and pain. Doctors want him to take even more medicine, but he prefers a different method. The problem is it's illegal. My doctor and I think that smoking cannabis is less harmful to me than all this medication. All the medicine does is keep me alive, but like a vegetable is alive. I don't want that. Cannabis hasn't prevented me from writing a book or accepting work when it's on offer. Jean-Jacques has already been arrested once for possession, but hopes that soon his cannabis use will become legal. A hope based on a new government decree that allows the sale of cannabis-based medication. A huge step forward for campaigners. I've seen people who could no longer function properly, but once they'd consumed a little cannabis could function as normal. By that I mean hold their hands normally, not clenched, able to talk, express themselves, because as their muscles relax, the tension drops. Some doctors say they'd prescribe cannabis tomorrow if they were allowed. The fact is that cannabis is a hunger stimulant. It favors the appetite, in particular for sweets. That's how cannabis has made its comeback as an appetite stimulant. We have loads of hunger suppressants, all the amphetamines, for example. But there are not that many substances that actually stimulate hunger. Some patients go abroad to source cannabis-based medication. In France, the authorities have given the green light in only a handful of cases over the past decade. Cannabis medication is still controversial. Le rapport bénéfice risque the risk-benefit analysis made for all medication shows the benefits for cannabis are very modest and the risks are considerable. They are anxiety, depression, triggering schizophrenia or a worsening of insanity on top of the sedative effects. That means France will move slowly. The first cannabis-based product sold will probably be a spray for multiple sclerosis patients that's already available in Germany and Britain. By contrast, medical marijuana is soon coming to a pharmacy near you. As long as you're in Israel, prescription holders will no longer have to turn to growers as more doctors will prescribe the drug. Israel's religious right-wing government is on its way to legalizing marijuana. A special parliamentary committee discussed making it easier to receive medical cannabis. Yaakov Litzman, the deputy minister of health and a leader in the ultra-Orthodox party, United Torah Judaism, described the new distribution plan. A special senior doctor will be in charge of the cannabis, which will be provided through the pharmacies. Medical marijuana was already legal in Israel, but required special permission with long waiting times and a large bureaucratic hurdle to get the drug. Ironically, Israel is considered a pioneer in growing cannabis. This Israeli greenhouse's claim to fame is a new strain of marijuana that can relieve symptoms of some chronic diseases without psychoactive effects. New agricultural advancements are not uncommon in the high-tech nation. We grow a variety of different kinds of plants, from very high THC to very high CBD, and we can match the correct percentages to our patients' needs. And some feel Israel is the perfect place to launch an expansive medical marijuana program. The country is home to too many suffering from PTSD, who marijuana advocates say could be helped by the drug. With frequent terrorist attacks and a mandatory military service, 
over one-tenth of the country suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder, a statistic three times greater than in the U.S. You don't know when it will start, when there will be an alarm, when terrorists could come out of a tunnel. You don't know. The situation is that you're uncertain and afraid. Research on the economic benefits are coming out as other countries have been legalizing cannabis, most notably in the United States, where countrywide legalization would result in tax revenues as high as $7 billion, not to mention cost reductions in law enforcement and court proceedings due to decriminalization, as well as the creation of a potentially lucrative hemp business. Colorado's marijuana market raked in over $700 million in sales last year, a number expected to hit $1 billion by 2016. Only time will tell how the landscape of Israel's medical marijuana is shaped into an emerging industry. For further insight now on the latest developments, we are joined via Skype by Aharon Lutsky, the chief executive of Tikkun Olam, a leading medical cannabis producer in Israel. Thank you very much for being with us. You are welcome. Well, Israel's health minister recently announced that he will allow pharmacies to be stocked with medical marijuana. How will this affect patients? Generally, I think it's very positive way steps, but I believe it will take a long time till it will arrive to the pharmacies. But generally, what we are thinking is that the announcement is a symbol that the Ministry of Health is with a positive way uh, to the medical cannabis. All right. Well, Knesset members have made a drive to decriminalize marijuana as well, most recently from Meretz MK, Tamar Zandberg, and the Jewish Home Parties, you know, in Magal. Do either of these have a hope of progressing? I believe it will take a long time, and this is the only preliminary discussion in the Knesset, and I not believe that it will come to in the next uh, say two years. Uh, so it will take time. What we have to concentrate is to make the medical cannabis legitimate as much as possible, like any other medicine. And I think the Lichman step is toward uh, this direction. What is holding up this process, though? The Why process the now, you mean in the in, in, a, in the now situation, we have a bottleneck when the uh, doctors who have the uh, permission to get a license is only 36 all over the country. If in the new step of Mr. Litzman, we allowed uh, to many other experts to give a license for medical cannabis. And uh, that might be open the bottleneck. All right. Well, what would decriminalizing marijuana actually mean for Israel's economy? For Israel's economy, I believe, uh, in the future, if they will allow to export from Israel, it will be a great opportunity because the medical cannabis, as you mentioned before, is now a boom in the world, and we see a big future for medical cannabis. And Israel is a leading in medical cannabis in research, in breeding, and also in clinic research in hospitals. That we are doing, for example, in a few hospitals in Israel. So we have the knowledge, and then we can develop the medical cannabis, and the income for the country will be in a hundreds of millions of dollars, I believe, in the future. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming on the program. Very much appreciated. On set now, we are joined by Hadar Fuchs Rubal, Economy and Marketing Manager at Cannabis Solution. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Well, let's first address the changing landscape for cannabis here in Israel and also all over the world. How do you see it evolving over the next five years? We can say the market is uh, today is more open to use of marijuana. I think the, what we see, the process in the United States, is a very good demonstrate for that. Um, governments legalize marijuana step by step. First, only the medical marijuana, and then the private consumers. Um, these days here in Israel, like you said, uh, we see much uh, willingness to make medical marijuana more accessible. And um, that shows us that m the majority of the population is willing to have marijuana in their life in some way. That was actually interesting. The report that Shelby Weiner prepared for us showed that the right wing government actually endorsed. Uh, this legalization process, or at least to bring it to the pharmacies. I mean, that's coming as a surprise to me, 
coming from the United States here. Is that a surprise to you? Um, I don't think so, because that's it. The marijuana issue is on the table, and people are talking about it. And I think um, in five years, we can see uh, higher demands and for different types of marijuana. Everything is moving now. What kind of types do you think we could see? Everything. Like we see now for medical marijuana, we have, we have different solutions for different diseases. Later, if we decide maybe people we want a specific use, um, different ways to consume the marijuana, edible uh, stuff, and so on. All right. So now moving on to a slightly different area of this topic, cultivation of these crops. You're in this area. How is it going to change? How has it changed? We are a company called Cannabis Solution. And we are a special solution to control humidity and climate condition inside cannabis greenhouses. What we see is a very young industry, um, but they, are want, they want to develop and learn a lot. Now, many of the worldwide new growers move from uh, small rooms to uh, commercial greenhouses. And this is a very difficult process, and it requires a lot of know-how. And um, as in order to achieve maximum results, they, the growers has to adapt their technology and method, because it's very different to grow in a small room than to grow in a commercial greenhouse. And what's the push, though, to, to bring it to the greenhouse? Is this just being able to supply and meet the higher demand from consumers? That's a good question, because um, actually it's two things. First of all, you need to have more product to the market. On the other end, you need to be more efficient. That's part of it. You need better, high-quality product in a very efficient method. And how you do it? You need to, the, the newest technology, the knowledge. And this is what we actually see, that the growers work with us because we can help them better understand how to do the switch, how to adapt all the technology into their greenhouse. Interesting. And what other trends do you expect to see in the coming years? That's a difficult um, question because, as we heard from Tikkun Olam, right now it's only the baby steps. We're not there yet. It's going to have a lot of regulation and adjustment to get it. What um, I think one of the biggest problems is the regulation, actually. Because in order to get, um, to get the, the demands, the requirements from the, in order to get what the consumer wants, we need a number of steps that we, in the beginning, but we're not there yet. We need more research. We need um, growing protocols for the growers to make their life easier growing tools like us that can help the growers to get better productions, license. There's a lot of stuff in the regulation that we are not talking enough about. And only when we put those issues on the table, then we can go forward. Well, we are seeing increasing numbers of evidence here showing that medical marijuana does, in fact, help patients uh, struggling with a variety of different illnesses, whether it's HIV or cancer. Uh, including even epilepsy, how do you think that growers can adjust their practices to meet probably what will eventually be this rising uh, or this surge of demand from the consumer side as the regulation and the governments catch on? Okay, so basically I think the most important thing is research and similar to what we see in other agriculture sectors, um, helping the growers, giving them, them tools to get better production. and. What usually happens is that the regulation is uh, slow in responding to uh, consumers' demand and to take care of what uh, the supply, all the supply aspects. And why is that? Why do you think the regulators are so slow? Because it's first of all, it's a thing of think about. Um, it used to be only a drug, and now it's also a medicine. And we need to think about what is good for the population. I think it's everything, how much political, everything is there in the marijuana sector. 
And it's also interesting because here we have a right-wing government, as I mentioned before, you could think is conservative, that they wouldn't really be on board with this, and yet we have France, that this is still illegal. And this France, when we think about it, is more perhaps liberal country, but they yet they have not legalized this. So what, what is involved here? Why are some governments more pro-medical marijuana than others? That's, I don't think it's about the current government. It's more about Israel as a country. Israel is one of the leading Israel is one of the leading companies in R&D of cannabis. And you can see it in the grower, for the growers here. You can see it in the research. Many, many different aspects uh, are very uh, developed here in Israel. Um, well, thank you very much for coming on the program. We very much appreciate it. It's lovely to get your insight. Well, that wraps up our special coverage today on medical marijuana. Stay tuned every day from all our global business coverage here from the Joff Port in Tel Aviv. I'm Natalie Orlich. Thank you for watching.